All right, everybody. In this video, we're going to quickly go through Acts chapter 6. Are you ready to dive in? Let's cut the fat. All right, everybody. In verse 1, now in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. So there's a problem. There's a crisis arising for the apostles now, that there's a, a neglect for their widow. And we know we need to take care of our widows, and so their complaints arose. The disciples needed to take action. So then they say in verse 2, Then the, the, the twelve summoned the multitude of the, of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Now, wait, stop. What in the world does that mean? Are you saying, now I used to work in the restaurant business at Taco Bell, but it's saying, is it saying here, is it better to share the word of God and not serve tables? Should I quit my day job and just do the Lord's work? Let's see what the 28 fundamentals have to say about this. God bestows upon all members of his church in every age spiritual gifts which each member is to employ in loving ministry for the common good of the church and of humanity, given by the agency of the Holy Spirit who apportions to each member as he wills, the gifts provide all abilities and ministries needed by the church to fulfill its divinely ordained function. According to the scriptures, these gifts include such ministries of as faith, healing, prophecy, proclamation, teaching, administration, reconciliation, compassion, and self-sacrificing service and charity for the help and encouragement of people. Some members are called of God and endowed by the spirit of functions recognized by the church in pastoral, evangelistic, apostolic, and teaching ministries particularly needed to equip the members for service, to build up the church in spiritual maturity, and to foster unity of the faith and knowledge of God. When members employ these spiritual gifts as faithful stewards of God's very grace, the church is protected from the destructive influence of false doctrine, grows with a growth that is from God and is built up in faith and love. So here they're not saying that it's wrong to serve tables. They said the key word is, is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. They're saying that it's not their gift. Like this said, there are, there are gifts of compassion, uh, self-sacrificing service and charity. So this was a business. Let's continue. Verse three, therefore brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread. Powerful. After the church recognized these men full of grace and the Holy Spirit, they laid hands on them and the word of God spread. And the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Credits named Jerusalem was a location where we see the first beginning of God's Holy Spirit moving and acting. Jesus acting through the disciples, through the apostles in Jerusalem. Remember what Jesus said? You will go then forth many other nations into all the world. They were just starting. Let's keep going. Verse 8. And Stephen, now we have a this new character on the line, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then there arose some from which is, is called the synagogue of the freedmen, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and those of the Sicilia and Asia disputing with Stephen. So now we have contention taking place with him. He was just anointed, ordained, and already there are people attacking him. 
in leadership because of his leadership. Uh, verse 10, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Then they secretly induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and elders and the scribes, and they came upon him, seized him, and brought him to the council. So they grab Stephen and they bring him. Verse 13, they also set up false witnesses and said, this man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against the holy place of the law. For we have heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And all who sat in the council looking steadfastly at him saw his face as the face of an angel. And that's chapter 6. Let's check out let's check out what Acts of the Apostles had to say about these seven deeds. It says here, the disciples of Jesus had reached a crisis in their experience under the wise leadership of the apostles who labored unitedly in the power of the Holy Spirit. The work committed to the gospel messengers was developing rapidly. The church was continually enlarging and this growth in membership brought increasingly heavy burdens upon those who in charge. No one man or even one set of men could continue to bear these burdens alone without imperiling the future prosperity of the church, there was necessity for a further distribution of responsibilities which had been borne so faithfully by a few during the earlier days of the church. The apostles must now take an important step in the perfecting of gospel order in the church by laying upon others some of the burdens thus far borne by themselves. This is why they had to ordain deacons, seven deacons, it's because there was a lot of um, neglect taking place with the widows. They just didn't have enough hands and time to spend with everybody. After they appointed this, this, these deacons, they were able to serve and minister to the widows and their word of God spread and the church continued to grow. So wrapping up, let us read this last paragraph in Acts of the Apostles commentary. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace in all churches of the saints. 1 Corinthians 14.33 He requires that order and system be observed in the conduct of church affairs today, no less than in the days of old. He desires his work to be carried forward and thoroughness and exactness so that he may place upon it the seal of his approval. Christian, Christian is to be united with Christian, church with church, the human instrumentality cooperating with the divine, every agency subordinate to the Holy Spirit, and all combined in giving to the world the good tidings, the grace of God. Friends, I am encouraged to know that God wants a unified church because it was his greatest argument that but if Satan can come in and raise up a crisis and a murmuring and a complaining that people are being neglected then God needs to raise up leaders in the church to take care of them to minister and serve their need and Christian needs to then be united to Christian and then church united to church how many of us have been there where we choose this church is more conservative than this church which is more liberal and in our own personal life we go back and forth from church to church friends the lord is going to unity in these last days from from the blessed examples that we are reading out of acts i'm excited to see what god's going to do go ahead and leave a comment down below how are these studies working for are you receiving new truths? Are you excited to study the Bible for yourself? As always, my name is Joseph, and by the grace of the living God, we will talk to you later.